What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 8 of my Montreal Canadiens Franchise Mode Series. Right now you're looking at the defending Stanley Cup champions, and that is not April Fool's joke. I'll actually show you guys the awards right now. So, in Season 7 we actually won our second Stanley Cup. We still have a few more years here. Right there you guys can see the cup. I'm hoping we can win one more. Honestly, last year's team was pretty stacked. Barzell grew to a 93, had a career year like 120 points. He's got 5 points in 2 games right now in the preseason. I'm hoping he can just keep that up. Team stats, of course, is champion. We're literally the defending Stanley Cup champion. So, first line there, we got Mantha playing with Barzell and Latinin, all 90 plus. You got Cockle with Thomas, is now an 89. He's making like $2.5 million. One year left, but still a great contract. And Duran. Then we got Comrie there playing with Duchesne, who's replacing Crosby. Crosby was like 39, 83 overall, won a lot of money. So hopefully Duchesne can do well. Uh, as well as O'Mara there on the right wing. Fourth line, I think sick. We got Kaliev, Suzuki, and Mestikov, all 82. Defense here, you can see we got Clark and Sexton, Preko, Murray still getting that plus three. Then we have Solon and Bodwin. So a uh, decent bottom pair, probably could improve that a bit. Forwards though, you know, the top three lines all get plus one, really nice. Goaltending, Carter Hart, big reason I think why we won the cup, 89 overall. Primo backing him up there in 81. And looking at the special teams here, honestly, I think it's pretty solid. That first unit getting plus three. It's actually all forwards, but they're getting plus three, so I said, you know, what the hell, let's try it. Uh, second unit there, I think, is really solid as well. Thomas, Duchesne, O'Meara with Clark and Sexton. Uh, the rest of these special teams there all look pretty decent. Um, no negative chemistry, which obviously is a plus a lot of times. The three man's tough to get positive. AHL team as well looks pretty good. You got 380s on the top line. This cappy guy is not too bad. 75 overall already at 21. Hoping he can grow. Um, looking at it, like honestly, that's a pretty good forward group. Uh, defense as well, you got two plus threes, which is kind of nuts. And then goaltending Svitov there, the starter at 75. Uh, I think AHL team, you know, should be good. I don't think our AHL team's won the Calder Cup yet, so maybe this will be their year. Um, also, two of you guys missed the last step, so we actually made a big change. Uh, gave Barzell the C after Clark <laughs> signed an offer sheet. So he's the captain, and then Caulfield and Duran are actually the two new alternate captains. Uh, Crosby was running A. I figured since Caulfield and Duran have been on the team the longest, makes sense. Uh, to give them the A's. Also show you guys the stats here for offense, defense, and goaltending. 100 offense, 92 defense, 88 goaltending. So again, I think you have a pretty solid team here. We'll get the Sims started and hopefully can win back-to-back Stanley -back Cups. And as I started saying, you guys took a quick look at the draft class. As you can see there, Nystrom, an actual franchise player, going to go first overall. Haven't had a franchise in like a few years, so if we for some reason suck this year, maybe we can go for him, but uh, we're actually, I think, 5-0 to start, so oh, I jinxed it, 5-1, and one, but we're looking pretty good. So I just simmed to the end of December, guys. Our team is doing great, 35-4, and four, like, are you kidding me? 64 points, absolutely crushing the division right now. I'll uh, we'll see if Barzell's our leading scorer still, and he is, 58 points, 39 games, he's killing it. We're approaching the deadline here, and a pretty big trade just went down. Florida gets Tyson Berry, who's down 84 for a first, a third, and a Finneganov, so kind of a lot to give up there. Another decent trade just went down. Washington getting Samuel Girard in a fourth round pick from Colorado for Evan Rodriguez in a third. I feel like Washington definitely wins that. And Minnesota just got Luke Kunin back on the team from LA for a few prospects there. Not too bad a deal. As you guys can see, about a week away from the deadline now. Currently 40-12-6. and six. Nashville uh, gets a first round pick for Essel and Dell. So we're first in the division. Hopefully we can hold on to it. Big win against Columbus there, 9-3. I'm thinking we'll probably try and add at least one, maybe two defensemen, honestly, uh, just to make that bottom pair a bit better. The forwards, I think, really can't improve much unless there's like somebody crazy on the block. Uh, otherwise, it'd be just too hard to trade for them. Lucas Johansson actually goes home there, 85 overall. Uh, Washington gets a first, Lautner in a fourth. And I think goaltending-wise, obviously, we have Carter Hart, so we're good there. Donato for a second-round pick. See if we can uh, get a couple wins. Another 9-1 to win against Arizona. Noel Gunler to Calgary uh, for a second round pick. Seems like a pretty good deal, honestly, for an 84. And let's see here against Pittsburgh. Anderson, 4.8 million for four years. I don't like that. I'd rather just kind of see what's out there. We actually lose to Pittsburgh, but 90 points to the deadline. 42, 14, and 6. Don't mind that at all. See where, uh, see how Brazil's doing. 85, 62. Really like that. Are we first in the NHL? Penguins, 81. And yeah, we are first in the NHL. So hopefully... Uh, coming back to back presence trophies. Actually, I think it'd be three presence trophies in a row, so that'd be pretty awesome. Again, guys, just gonna try and see if there's a couple defensemen we can add to the team. Other than that, I think we're pretty good. So, right now, making the Capitals a huge trade offer to completely retool our bottom pair D. As you can see, they have both Gustafson and Gerard on the block, so I want both of them. Uh, Gustafson here, one year left, 84 overall offensive defenseman. They're actually two way defenseman, but good offensive stats. Uh, Gerard is an offensive defenseman there, really good skater, um, good hands. They just got him. Again, one year left, had them retaining 50% on both. Stolen there, hasn't really been great, 25-79, I'm willing to give him up. Um, then we got this goalie here, Eminger, meanly potential, we have a few of them though. Sent around picks to hopefully just, you know, even it up, make that trade go through. 
show you guys here the goalies. Uh, Morrison's the best of the prospects, Eminger, Arkipop, pretty much equal, so it's whatever. Now, I could also add Boldwin to this trade, but I think we'll probably need him for next year, as I doubt we'll be keeping Gustafsson and Gerrard. Then we have a pretty good defensive defense in the AHL I can call up, who I think will play well with Bodwin, so that's kind of the plan right now. Value's pretty equal, we'll see what Washington says here. Trades rejected, okay, I thought that was going to be pretty good. Um, we have a bunch of picks, honestly, this year. I wouldn't mind, you know, we can throw another one in. Um, let's do our third. We still have, you know, a Florida third round pick there. And trades accepted, okay. Honestly, I think that makes our team so stacked. And I think that's the only trade we're going to make the deadline, guys. As like I said, our four group is still stacked. So much depth, and obviously top end players are awesome. And then defense now, I mean, look at that. Like, it's pretty nice. And then, of course, still heart and net, so... Let's see what happens. I'm excited. I think we can possibly win back to back here. And I just turned the end of the season, guys, and our team is insane. 58, 18, and 6. So two wins shy there of 60. I like, are you kidding me? Um, I think after the deadline there as well, we had something like 10 straight wins. Yeah, 10 straight wins before a 1 0 loss to the Flames. I think we actually only lost three games after the deadline. So just ridiculous how good this team is. Really, I think we have an awesome shot here to repeat as Stanley Cup champions. 122 points. Panthers are really good too at 112, but. Not quite as good. Barzell again just went off. 117 points. Are you kidding me? 34 goals, 83 assists. I loved how just good he's playing. I don't know if it's just because we gave him the C or what happened. Uh, looks like he did win the President's Trophy again. And I'm curious too if it's the second straight year or the third straight year. I honestly cannot remember, but uh, I just love seeing how good Barzell is playing. Maybe he goes up to a 94. Wow. Caulfield's best year yet as well. 104 points. That's insane. Uh, the dude just went off. He's going to be a 90 next year, I think. Yeah, career year by far is best before that was like 82. Latin in here also just went off 101 points. Now, I'm happy for him. Again, just like Caulfield, career year. Uh, but unfortunately for us, it's a contract year. So he's going to want to get paid. Uh, Robert Thomas as well just put up a point per game. And his contract up. he was making 2.8. So we're going to lose some guys, which basically just means we need to win now because this is our best year to win of the next, you know, three years. Uh, season 19 will be a lot tougher. Mantha even 97, Duran 91. Career year for Mantha as well. Duran I think is like five points shy. Sexton here even 61 points as a D-man. Two-way defender. Um, really, his offensive stats aren't even that crazy, so that's really good to see. Just getting a bunch of assists. Duchesne 58. I think that's worth the money. Um, everyone else here looks to be going pretty good. Comrie 43 should continue to grow hopefully. So yeah, really you know, happy of course with how this team did. I can't believe honestly just. Uh, the top three there, putting up the 100 points on that first line. Like, they just went off, so love to see that. Or actually, first line is Mantha, Barzell, and Latinen. So it's even more impressive. Kotz will put up 104 on the second line. Goaltending here, let's see. Hart, crazy record, of course. 0.902 to 2.9, so pretty good. Definitely a bit better, I think, than Askarov's. And Primo there, I think, as a backup, had pretty good numbers as well. So we'll check AHL quick before you see how Barzell finished in the entire league. Bathurst in 50. How's an 80 not putting up more than 50 points in AHL? Uh, Bray Belay only 46, Grand's there 42, 77, maybe he gets a bit of a growth, maybe we can call him up next year because like I said we're going to need a couple of guys I think to step up and uh, make our bottom D pair in the NHL, especially if we need to save cap, probably have to trade away one of, if not both, Murray and Pareko. So let's see, there we go, Barzell wins the Art Ross Trophy, I think that's the first time we've had Art Ross Trophy winner in this franchise, two points better there than McKinnon, uh, Kasha 111, geez he's going to grow for sure, Sagan, Cockle got fifth, um, Hall, Ranton, Latin in there, so 300 plus point guys. Look at all the 100 plus point scores this year. I think that's 10 guys had 100 plus points, maybe even 11 there. And goals, looks like we were just shy. McKinnon, Kravchenko each had 60. Caulfield, 59. So I'm not sure if they just tie. We'll find out. I forget how that works or if it's by points. I should know by now, but still, we had the Art Ross Trophy winner, Barzell, and Caulfield there, super close winning the Marusa Shards. So hopefully these guys can keep this up in the playoffs. Um, of course, we know we won the President's Trophy, but. Uh, I want to just see who finished last in the NHL here. So you got, what, six teams there, 100 plus points. We'll probably play Florida second uh, round, which is ridiculous. The two best teams by far, but uh, that is the playoff format. So what are you going to do? I'm looking through here, who's going to be last? It is the San Jose Sharks. I believe they were last last year as well. 63 points. So yeah, definitely going through a rebuild right now. And this is kind of surprising, guys. I thought our AHL team would for sure be making the playoffs this year, maybe even winning the Calder Cup. And we're not even making the playoffs, so uh, maybe because Svita is not a good enough goalie at 75, but very surprising for sure. And this is kind of funny. So in the first round of the playoffs, we're going to see Washington Capitals. We just stole two of their better defensemen at the deadline. We can't lose them. They got Verana, Shane Wright, though, I forgot. First line center, 93 overall. He's going to be tough to match up with. I mean, we have Barzell, same rating. And after that, we're just better throughout. Uh, like their bottom six there is not too great. Defense, they got Ghost of Spare. After that, it's all 70s. Of course, we took like two of their best three defensemen, so... We can't lose these guys. Uh, Samsonov 85 is not a 
bad starter, but Hart's a lot better. Like looking at that D, five of their 60 are in the 70s. We can't lose this team. If we lose this team with this God Squad, um, I will freak out. So first game here, of course, at home in Montreal, the Bell Center. Hopefully we can, uh, you know, start it off right here. Our last playoff run, I think we went 16 and two. So we'll see if we can, you know, beat that this time. And three to one lead, there we go. Latin and Clark, Kaylee have all on the board. Uh, four three now, they're making it close. Clark gets one. And seven to four, okay, boys woke up in the third. Thomas, Caulfield, Domestikov. Big win there, you know, they made it close though. Uh, down one um, after the second period. I was a little bit worried they might make the comeback. So hopefully we can go back to back here in Montreal, give us, you know, a comfortable lead on this series. So here we go guys, second period, second game, sorry, first period. Clark for us, I'll call Toffoli for them. Uh, three two now, Latin for us. Wow, so close game, Sexton gets one, lose it 4-3, to three. we actually got outshot there by 10, I'm not sure what the boys were doing, like, you know, you gotta play a bit better than that, I think, so, tied up 1-1, one, one. again, this team we're playing, worst team to make the playoffs, they have set 5 of their 6 defense were in the 70s, and we took their 2 best, I'll freak out, I'll freak out, down 1 to Foley, come on, big 3rd, are you kidding me, uh, Dal call for them, Thomas for us, so we're down 2-1, to one. I'm getting a little bit nervous. Oh my goodness. Oh, come on, we have to tie the series here. I mean, the good thing is, I guess, the two last games we lost, they're both one goal games we lost, but still, here we go. Game four, and come on, down one. Are you kidding me? How are we not scoring? How are we, they have 70s in D, on D, sorry. <laughs> wow, a goal period, we get shut out three nothing. It's like they heard me how it was one goal games. I mean, we've got one goal in the last two. Have to win the next three straight. This would be, even though we did win the first game, this would be worse than Tampa, I think, because our team is better, and this Washington team is worse than Columbus. At least we're going home. If, if we won one game at a time, we won 10 straight after the deadline. We can win three straight. Come on. Let's go. 3 nothing. Kalia, Barzell, Thomas. The boys have woken up. Let's go. There we go. They beat us 3 nothing. We beat them 3 nothing. I'm honestly going to freak out if we can't at least make it out of the first round like we gotta win the next two here we didn't win a single one in washington yet maybe this is the time let's go zero zero two nothing let's go suzuki latin are you kidding oh okay we won it Duchesne there that was close four minutes left puts one in so three two lead <sighs> tied the series back up heading to game seven in montreal there's no way after like you know two straight wins going back to montreal boys fired up we have to win this. Like, we absolutely have to win this. Come on. Here we go. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. 5 nothing after the first. Omer, Caulfield, Duran, Suzuki. Duran with another. 6-1, um, to one, Caulfield. And let's go. 7-3. I was going to say, if we blow a 5 nothing lead after the first. All right. So, uh, a little bit of controversy there in the first series. I bet you all the analysts were doubting us. Saying we're too good or something. We don't have the drive after winning the Stanley Cup last year. But... On the second round, playing the Buffalo Sabres. Like I was saying, guys, in the second round here, up against the Buffalo Sabres, who now have Dylan Larkin, which is nuts, playing with Jack Eichel and Jeff Skinner. Uh, Larkin and Eichel is just a sick combo. Peary there in 80, but he's playing with Middlestat, Stutzel, so that's a pretty sick second line. Cousins, Trocek, Zucker. Um, honestly, that's a pretty solid forward group, I think. Defense, Tallinn's in 95. Ristolainen, their defense, about as good as ours, honestly. Goaltending, that's where we got them. Okay, they have two 80s, so... I would say forwards, we have a slight edge. Defense, I think, is equal. And then goalies, we have a huge lead. Hart's an 89. Markstrom's an 80. It's not even close. So hopefully, you know, that's the difference. Barzell there had eight points in seven games. A bit slower of a playoff than he had last year, but that's okay. Um, as long as we can kind of keep winning here. So ho hopefully, again, we can find a way, whether it's Markstrom or I already forget who the backup was. They're both 80s. We got we to score here. So down one after one in the first. There we go. Gustafson, Sexton, Barzell. And hold on there, 5-1, Latin and O'Meara. I was actually just thinking, Gus and Gerard haven't really had too many goals yet in the playoffs that first round, but I think they're both kind of more, you know, assist guys, obviously, playing defense. So hopefully, you know, they're doing well there. I think we really, we had so many goalie prospects. It was definitely worth that trade, kind of uh, solidify that bottom D pair. The second game here, first period, up to nothing, Mantha O'Meara. 2-1, hold on, boys, hold on. And there we go, 5-2, Durant gets a couple, Latin in one, Larkin one, but not enough. <sighs> All right, so 2 nothing series late. This is a pretty comfortable spot to be. Have to win two of the next five. We're going to Buffalo now, though, so it uh, could be a bit tougher to win here, but I think I think the boys are able to pull this off, hopefully. Um, again, just, just score. Like, they got an 80 in net, just shoot the puck. There we go, Murray O'Mara. Ooh, 
Three three, they have a big second. Barzal gets one. Come on. Let's go. Hugh oh, Caulfield with the hat trick in the third period. I love to see it. And then Duran as well. Was that a four goal game for Caulfield? Um no, okay. Still hat trick in one period for Caulfield. You'll love to see that. He said, you know, I want the sweep. I want the sweep. Let's go. Five one, five, two, seven, three. We were playing very, very well against Buffalo. Uh, I guess that first series there was just a wake up call. You know, you can't take any series lightly. So game four, possible sweep. 3-1, Omer, Duran, Barzell, second there, uh, Nemestikov gets one, 4-2 lead, and we hold on, 6-3, Barzell gets a couple more, I believe that's a hat-trick for Barzell, so there we go, back-to-back uh, -back Hatties on this team, and we're on to the conference final, so after that first series where I thought this god team was going to get, you know, taken out, somehow we're on the conference final, so love to see it. And in the conference finals, we can see Tampa Bay Lightning, who actually have JT Miller back on the team, Barbashev there, first line starter, now an 89, so he grew like crazy. Kucherov's on the team, 88. They got Radish there with the no. Kravchenko, so no more Stamkos. No more Brain Point either. Um, definitely doesn't look like as good a Tampa team as we've seen. Like a 75, 74 on the fourth line is kind of rough. Surchev, there was a 90. Hedman's down to a 78. Jeez. Um, Peterson, Acker there. Just some guy. I mean, I don't know. This team, they still have Vashleski in net. Allen Felt's not too bad, 82. We're, about, we're a lot better team. I think, honestly... I don't know, it's tough to say, like, Washington had us closest, but I think Buffalo is probably the best team we played, even though they have, you know, 280 goalies, but Vashlevsky being an 89 could steal this for them, so hopefully that's not the case, I think we can take advantage there, their bottom six is pretty rough, defense wasn't the greatest, so first game, 2-0, Caulfield Thomas, 3-1, Klaeliev, and there we go, so hold on there, 3-1 again, I think if the boys just, you know, take advantage of their matchups, like, our team has so much more depth than every other team, I feel like our top line's can, are just as good, if not better, then it's our kind of depth lines that are just so much better that should be able to kind of be the difference maker here again us these playoff wins. Second game, let's go. 3-1. Cockle gets two. Thomas won. Cockle wants another Hattie. 4-1, uh, he gets it. And uh, we hold on there, 4-3. to three. I actually forgot to show you guys. Um, Caulfield, after two rounds, was the playoff leading scorer on our team. I think he had 16 points in 11 games, I want to say. So um, he's just doing even better now. I mean, two hat-tricks in the playoffs is pretty nuts. Going to Tampa Bay. It's possible another sweep here if we can uh, keep going. Like, we've won, going back to last series, we won three in a row, four. That's two more. We've won nine straight in the playoffs now, which is pretty nuts. And 1-1, one, one, Latinen. Wow. Four goal, uh, second period, and Latinen gets the hat trick. So this team is just obsessed with hat tricks, and I love it. 5-1, and Mantha Gare, 6-1. I don't know. The first, the first round must have just been a fluke, or at least the first four games. Like, these guys are playing nuts. Nine straight wins now is just crazy. Three hat-tricks that I've seen. I maybe even missed one. Actually, no, is that four? three or four hat-tricks? Because Caulfield has two, Barzell has one, Lionel has Yeah, so four hat-tricks as well. Just crazy. Like, the guys are just scoring at will, basically. Possible sweep here, game four. one nothing lead. Oh, they get two. Come on, we got to tie this up in the third. Oh, close game. Duran gets one, unfortunately. Lose it 3-2. to two. So, again, one, what was it, nine to straight there. I can be happy with that. We just have to win one of the next three. We got two games at home. I feel like we should be able to find a way here. So game number five, first period. Kaliev gets one. Second period, wow, lots of scoring. Uh, they get three, two from Krepchenko, Nemeskov, Omera. Come on, big third. Going to OT, let's go, boys. Are you kidding me? Barbashev, OT winner. Okay, so that's two in a row for Tampa. <sighs> I'm a little worried now, I'm a little worried, but we got two games left. Just have to win one of the next two. I mean, come on. So game number six here, I've also saw, oh my God, three nothing down. Oh, we're not coming back. 5 nothing. I was about to say, I saw Vegas actually swept Minnesota Wild in the Western Conference uh, Finals. So, whoever wins here is playing Vegas. Are you kidding me? Won the first three straight, lost the next three. <sighs> Until that game, too. The two losses, at least, were both by one goal. We have to win Game 7 here. Maybe it's like a final back-to-back -back years. The boys gotta be angry. They gotta be angry. Heading back to Montreal. Let's go. Find a way. Come on. Down one early. Down two. We've put up five in a third period before. Please, boys. Please get it done. Are you kidding me? Three nothing. We just caught reverse swept by the Tampa Bay Lightning. They heard me making fun of them in round one. Had a three nothing series lead. And they reversed sweep. That's happened like five times in NHL history. I mean, I'd rather do that than uh, lose in the first round, but... That's heartbreaking. And look at this, guys. Lottery results are in. San Jose picking first overall. And I'm honestly glad because there's a franchise guy available. They got robbed last year. Carolina second. And then LA actually jumps up from 9 to 3. So overall, 
kind of what was supposed to happen, which is nice to see. Also, right there, you can look. Tampa Bay ended up winning the Cubs, so I mean, at least we lost the eventual winner. Caulfield there, 20 points in 18 playoff games. Pretty good. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I still can't believe. How do you, how do you choke a 3-0 lead? Um, Latin and Duran, point per game. Barzell, Thomas, just under. Mantha, uh, had it hard to do there in the playoffs. Pretty good, 0 .911, 2.63. Uh, actually, Primo actually got subbed in at one point, and had one loss, so. You can probably tell by my voice, I, I honestly can't believe we choked that 3 nothing lead. And then Tampa won it, so I mean, if we, we beat Tampa, we probably beat Vegas, probably win our back-to-back -back cups. Literally a game away. A game away, a goal away. We lost two by one, like... Oh, I can't believe it. So Tampa, they actually went seven there with Vegas, so who knows. Um, Vegas beat Arizona in five, Vancouver seven, swept the wild like we mentioned. Alright, let's take a look at the awards here. So, we did win the President's Trophy three years in a row. And got the Stanley Cup in only the one year. Honestly, still just can't believe that. So Barzell there won the Art Ross. Actually, the first time since McDavid's won it four straight years. Maybe even five. It goes off the screen. Um, Barzell gets the heart, though, back-to-back -back years, which is awesome. Sexton there, James Norris. That's crazy. I didn't even think he'd have a chance at it. So, so far, we've won every player award. And there's another one, Barzell Lady Bing. Oh, my God. If we won the Cup this year, this would have been just, like, the perfect year. Um, Saunders there, though, with the Calder. Kucherov, Conn Smythe. Sorokin, Vesna. I uh, also got the William Jennings, Hannafin, Bill Masterton, Ducks coach Jack Adams, Lundstrom there, Selkie, Barzell, Ted Lindsay, and then McKinnon, Marisha Shard, which we almost have with Caulfield. So AHL here, uh, the Phantoms won it. We didn't even make the playoffs, so they're not going to have any team awards. Individual awards, four checks down the AHL, can have the most points. I love it when like the veterans are still in the AHL and just killing it. I also got MVP there, Clapperton, are you kidding me, most goals. Um, Eminger, outstanding rookie, this guy, best D, Jones, uh, best goalie. Vorchek, MVP of the playoffs. So Vorchek just carried that Phantoms team. Uh, Lorenz, though, community involvement. Love to see that. Love to see that. Peters, lowest goals against. So, I mean, again, I'm a bit worried because we're going to be losing a lot of this team. Like, this was our best shot. And to get reverse swept, it's a bit embarrassing. It's a bit embarrassing, not going to lie. Take a look at the retired players here. See if Crosby maybe finally calls it quits. He does not. He's still going. Tavares, though, 1,300 points, 1,400 games. Backstrom finished two points shy at 1,300. Jamie Benn there actually plays entire career with Dallas. Kessel retires with Buffalo. Voracek does retire after, you know, cleaning up the AHL. What was his rating there? 73, but still had a really powerful shot, I guess. Decent hand, so tore it up. O'Reilly retires. O'Reilly was like an 89. Yeah, he retires as a 90, so he could have kept going. James Neal, Victor Hedman we saw was lower rated. JVR, Stefan there, Riley Smith, Ryan Ellis, Tatar. Tons of guys, honestly, uh, calling it quits. Check the goalies right now. Corey Crawford, biggest name goalie, retires at 42. I think the goalies play a little bit longer. Bernier, 38. Koskinen, 38. 42 years old for Crawford. That's pretty crazy. Right now, guys, making the San Jose Sharks a huge offer to try and get first overall. Get that franchise sniper. Offering O'Mara here, A6 overall, medium elite winger. Making $5 million, which isn't a bad contract. Also, our first round pick. I gotta be quick, though. 30 seconds left. Value's a bit on our side. We'll see what they say. Trade's rejected. Okay, honestly, we need to save some cap. And I feel like getting that prospect or whatever would be huge. And I ran out of time there to try and make that trade happen. Nystrom goes first overall. 83, medium franchise. Solid pick. And looking at the draft class here, guys. There's four gems I'm going to try and take. Also, too, I was checking to see if there's any guaranteed medium elites we can take later rounds. Unfortunately, it's just like, you know, the top five guys. So, um, probably not going to try and make a trade for one of them. It's just going to be too expensive. As you can see, they're all pretty good, though. 82 medium elite, 82 medium elite, 80 medium elite. I was thinking about maybe making a trade for them, but... Didn't think it was worth it. 81 medium elite, so pretty good uh, top five. And right now, guys, I'm trying to trade Duchesne to the Blues for a fourth round pick. Uh, he's about to be a UFA. I feel like we probably can't bring him back just with everyone we need to resign. So try and get something for him. Trade rejected. I mean, I'll take a sixth round pick because, like I said, I don't think I'm able to afford to keep Duchesne, unfortunately. And they do say yes to the sixth. And next pick here, guys, number 26 in the second round. Again, I want to try and get all four of those gems. There should still be three available here. One's about to go. Um, yeah. Ackerman ranked 58 central scouting then we should be able to get the other two as well 93 133 Hopefully they're all decent. Let's see Ackerman here or maybe it's Ackerman like Mighty Duck 64 low top six That's pretty solid as well. Our next pick here number 25 in the third round is pick 87 Again, just sticking with the gems hope for the best uh, we're Just getting this guy here uh, Lundmark guaranteed low top four 62 is also a decent rating and next up We have pick number 29 in the fourth round. I thought I got a fourth from st. Louis must have been a late fourth, or I don't know what I did wrong. Um, he's still there. Finger, gem, goalie. Let's see what he is. 
and medium elite we keep getting so lucky with those medium elite goalies honestly they're just such nice trade pieces and actually just remembered we didn't get a fourth from the blues we got a sixth uh we wanted that fourth but unfortunately it was rejected so fifth rounder here no more gems left so far i think we've done pretty decent this draft holmberg i'm gonna take a chance here on the 50 50 medium elite hopefully he's like a low top six medium bottom six that's rough we're now in the sixth round pick number seven this is the st louis pick 50 50 medium top six menard let's do it and medium bottom six come on hopefully we can get lucky here other sixth rounder pick number 29 uh guaranteed i don't want that danner medium elite i think we take a chance who cares in the late rounds another medium bomb six those guys are just not even gonna get contracts that was actually our last pick in the draft guys so i feel like those four gems were good but then of course after that was just all medium bomb six so we're now through resign phase guys and we have a lot of work to do almost 40 million in cap space but tons of guys to resign latin's a 92 doesn't want an extension same with clark um mantha though does 3291 so i mean all three of those guys are gonna want about 10 million i bet yeah 11.6 what's clark want 12.3 <laughs> oh my god and Mantha wants 11.8. So that's a lot of money. <laughs> Thomas, I'd like to keep him as our second line center. 11.6, a $9 million raise on what he was making before. Um, this is going to be tough, but I think we should be able to keep most of our guys. Also, guys, I totally forgot, but Carter Hart needs a new contract as well because he signed like a one-year $5 million deal with us. Doesn't want the extension. What's he looking for? 7.9, eight years, so he's 36. I mean, he doesn't want the extension. I'll offer him 7.5. Otherwise, let him go to free agency and then either sign him or the next best goalie. Uh, we basically kind of have to, I think, qualify Latin and Clark. And before we can even sign them, really, we have to worry about the UFAs because we're going to run out of money. We're going to have to trade away Pareko, maybe Murray, another forward. Mantha, we got to bring him back. He's just too good not to. So we only need him for two years. We get 100k cheaper. He was making like nine, so let's try... He doesn't want to come back as well. So 10-5 for two. Maybe he'll say yes to that because he doesn't want to stay on the team. Same goes for Robert Thomas, 27.89. He was making 2.7. He wants to get paid, 11.6. For an 89, like that's the same money as 92s there. I don't know if that's honestly worth it. We could probably get like a 90 plus center instead of Thomas in free agency. So it kind of sucks. We could have traded Thomas probably for like a third um, at the draft, but I think we'll probably lose him as well. And look at the fourth line here, guys. The Mexico needs a new contract. Doesn't want an extension. Looking for 1.5. Honestly, Kopaka probably just play with Suzuki and Kaliev. That's fine. Um, even we have Robayev, uh, Brebele, Bassing. You probably keep these two guys just as like insurance. Yeah, 800k. I mean, might as well. Those are just cheap fourth line dudes. Now, I was thinking about maybe trying to keep Gustin or Gerard. Unfortunately, they just want too much money. Gustin there, 5 million. Gerard, I think, wants more. Uh, 5.6 and 83. So, yeah, they're both rentals. Didn't quite work out. It almost did. Like, again, a game away from the Stanley Cup final, but I have to let them go. Basically, I want to see what, what Hart says before we start offering money to the RFA, just because the RFAs are kind of safer to let wait, obviously. Mantha, unfortunately, rejected our offer, said not enough money and not long enough. Bastion, though, accepts. Hart rejects, wants to test free agency. <sighs> that sucks. All right, guys, looking at goalies again, I'm just going to let Hart go to free agency. Hopefully, we can sign him out of there. Primo, though, I want to keep as the backup. 81 solid, especially 800k. That's actually such a good contract. Speed Top does want to come back. 24.75. Honestly... Like, it's not that great. Like, it doesn't look like he'll make the NHL. I'm fine with releasing him. Find a better AHL starter. Morrison can be the backup. Um, Arkhipov there, we got to make sure we give a contract to, just because uh, he is an elite goalie. Looking at our defense here, Bodwin, I think we got to bring back for the bottom pair. 2.3 for two years for an 80. Honestly, if it's like the fours, you could probably get somebody even cheaper. So I'm just going to let him go. I'm hoping Lorenz here and Grands can both grow to be, you know, decent. Um, they, neither of them want an extension, so we'll have to qualify. Wait till later on when they're desperate. Pilo, I'm gonna let him go. Also, guys, totally forgot to mention, but Sexton actually grew to an 89. Uh, I did win the Norris Trophy last year, so that makes sense. I think he's got like max trade value now, too. And then Coughlin as well, up to a 90. So, um, Latin and Clark, I mean, I could get these two signed. 11.6. Does he get, he does get cheaper a bit. Barely. We only need him for two years. Let's try offering Latin in 10.5 for two. And Clark here, I'm gonna offer 10.75 for two. We'll see what they say. Mantha still needs a contract. Um, I guess we'll just do four years, so he's 36. And let's try 10.75. So 250k raise plus an extra two years. Hopefully he says yes to that. So Mantha accepted our contract off, which is awesome. Back in the team. Uh, Latin though wants to test free agency, so we qualified him. 
Primo there accepts as well, so we got our backup. Clark wants to test free agency. So yeah, we really don't have a lot of options with those guys. Basically, just have to hopefully sign them for cheaper in free agency. We still have like almost $30 million. These two though take up 20. And then basically it's Thomas and Hart we have to try and get for 5 million each, which it's just not gonna happen. So um, it looks like we lose Robert Thomas as well, just cause in 89 wanting 11 million, 11 and a half, um, that's tough. Also guys, for some reason I thought Primo accepted before, but he didn't, but as you can see, he just did often like an extra 50K. And before we get to the resign phase guys, I actually have to hire a few new AHL coaches. I fired the head coach after they missed the playoffs last year. This Bataglia guy, really good teaching there. I don't know if you can actually see it yet. A minus teaching for HL head coach is really solid, plus an A plus power play. So uh, I'm gonna make him a decent offer here. Hopefully, come in, be our AHL head coach, help those guys grow. Also, have to find an assistant coach and a goalie coach, who will just probably be whoever like the best value is. And so we're now at the free agency period, guys. Really curious to see who's out there because we have a lot of options with guys. You know, we have qualifying offers on. Clark's the top free agent, and Nisimov 90 RFA. Robert Thomas there, 11.8 for an 89, just seems way too much. Like Latin, 200k last season, 92. Hopefully, we can you know keep him and Clark. Bunch of big name RFAs, probably a bunch of other teams are like you know we're just not paying you. We're trying to wait and see what happens. Uh, Sagan available there, so yeah, Sagan, 90 overall, million and a half less than Thomas. Like that just makes more sense. Uh, even Kokaniemi, two million less, 89, same rating. Like come on, Palat, Lindblom, Panarin still there as a 90. Sanheim, wow, so. Um, yeah, a lot of options here. Ovechkin's still available, but he's an 80 now with HL potential. How's his shot? Shot's still sick, hands aren't too bad, but 69 speed. Uh, I mean, the guy can't even skate anymore. How old is he? He's 41, still holding on. Goaltending here, let's take a look. Um, Sorokin's a top free agent. He did just win the Vesna. 86 wants 8.5. Hart wants 8 million. Okay, that's like 100k, I think, more than he asked for from us. Askarov's a 90, not gonna go down that path again. John Gibson, 85. So we need a goalie. I'm going to try and keep Hart. He's got no one interested right now. So I don't know. Off from 8.25, six years. That leaves us with about 20 million, which basically is enough to keep Latin and Clark. And that's it. But I'm going to try and trade away one of our defensemen. Um, hopefully bring somebody in. I noticed Matthew could chuck down here. Really good value, I think. Um, 87 overall. You only want 6.8 million. Like, it's very, very good value, to be honest. Especially, I think, kind of the game he brings. So... I uh, wouldn't mind getting Kachuk as well. I'm not sure if this is going to go through, guys, but it would actually be a really good trade for us. Pareko making $5.5 million for two more years in 83, 34 years old. Nurse here, 83, 32 years old, a couple years younger. And he's making 2.9 for one more year. So basically, we save $2.5 million, same rating. See what the devil say here. Nurse is on the block. Trade rejected, okay. Um, I thought, you know, maybe that'd be a one for one. We kind of just, like, fleece them there. I think, honestly, we could add, like, a mid pick, though. They'll probably say yes. Try a fourth rounder here. There we go. All right, and next year, guys, we're trying to make a trade to fill the hole we have at second line center. Trading for Ponomarov on the Minnesota Wild. Solid player. He's only 25, ace on overall, high top six. As you can see there, his stats are kind of nuts. Like, all 90-plus hands, good shot. Uh, defense even, 94 stick checks. Got, got good physical, fast. And the contract there, 2.9 million. So we're saving a couple million trading O'Mara here. His third line right wing for us. I think he's honestly too good to be playing third line. So we need a center. He does have 79 faceoffs, but... The sniper, I don't know. I feel like it makes sense here to save a couple million. Uh, get Ponomarev, who I think could really grow on our second line. He's on the block, but they want Omera, who's got a bit more value. I'm good with this as a one-for-one. One. We'll see what they say here. And trades rejected. I thought for sure that could go through. So I'm going to try doing a third this year and a second next year. Again, I feel like we shouldn't really have to add. I think it should be a one-for-one, one, but he's not on the block. We'll see what they say now. There we go. Trades accepted. I feel like it's a good trade for us. We just saved, like, what, $4 million between those last two trades. And check this out, guys. Look at free agents. I just noticed Wallstead, 86 overall, franchise potential, wants $1.4 million. Um, I'm going to give him way more than that. I'm going to give him, like, $3 million. It'll probably cost us, like, a second-round pick. Hopefully, they don't match or something. Uh, if we get Wallstead at that point, honestly, I hope I don't get hurt. If we do get, we'll trade him. Uh, that'd just be an absolute steal. Also, guys, I'm looking at two-way players right now. There's actually a bunch of 81s available for, like, the minimum. Uh, Chmelski here I'm going to give an offer to, like, just could be a fourth liner for us or tear up the AHL. Uh, same with Morand, 81. He had pretty good stats, pretty quick or whatnot, so uh, I'll give him that offer. The RFAs, like, they always match when it's that cheap. Um, the rest are 80s, and we already have a bunch of 80s, so unless one of these guys has, like, some crazy stats, Norris is pretty good. Um, Formington also isn't too bad. Honestly, I'm going to give an offer on Norris and Formington because we did lose, actually, a bunch of AHL players. Uh, they were, like, 27, 28 high 70s i figured just you know 
give us give us space for the kids, but if we're bringing in 80s, might as well. And I was looking through free agency, guys, looking for a bargain player, as I thought Matthew Kachuk was probably the best deal, but he might be a bit out of our price range. I found Luke Kunin, 86 overall, wants 3.8 million. So we just made that trade for the center. He could have been our second line center, but only had 40 points last year, third line roll. I think he'd just be a really good third line center for us, replace Duchesne for a really good price. So um, I think we can definitely do this. I'll offer him 4 million for two years. Hopefully he says yes. He's a two way forward, good defensive stats. I really like the sign if it happens for us. And so the HL goalie coach accepted his offer, which is nice to see. Um, this guy says no. This is the AHL assistant, so we'll have to get him still. We hear back an AHL head coach. Rejects it. Doesn't feel like the roster matches the challenge. Wow. I mean, we'll just offer him a bit more money. He'll probably say yes. Uh, Niku, uh, I mean, we can't take on that salary. Trade just went down. Chicago getting a second and a third for Pajot. Still have not heard from any free agents. There we go. We get Formington. Again, same with Norris. Fourth line guys, maybe even the AHL, but... Um, definitely give us some options because you know we are losing some depth here. Um, Pataglia, happy to join the team after I offered him more money. Achievement unlocked, one and a half percent higher head coach of A plus overall rating in franchise mode. Uh, this guy does not have an A plus overall rating, but all right. I mean ours does. Luke Kuhn accepts. That's awesome. I think he's such a good value there, for third line center. Um, Carter Hart rejected the deal, so hopefully we get Wallstead again. We're trying to steal him, but um, that is kind of the saving grace here in losing Hart. Accepts as of now. Maybe we should have honestly offered him more than the three million, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this was the newest HL assistant coach, hopefully, but he actually went with a different team, so still looking for one. And Matt's in there, three and four. Again, I don't want to take on any salary now because we don't really know how much we're gonna have. And Islanders chose to match your offer, so I kind of figured we gotta go get a goalie now. So I feel like we pretty much have two options here, unless we make a trade, and that's either signing Gibson, who's 85, 33 years old or Alexandrov, 83, 25 years old, medium elite. So he could get better. Last year at a point nine oh one, which is not terrible. 42 wins, uh, must have been on the Hurricanes. Really good stick there, it's 90. Uh, poise kind of sucks at 71, but the rest of his stats, 98 agility and speed, it's pretty ridiculous. Um, I don't know, maybe like he wants three years, would he do cheaper maybe at one year? One year's five million. Let's try offering him like 4.5 for two years kind of see what happens because he's a medium elite so like he could grow if he plays well that's kind of like our only option too and right here guys i'm gonna try making clark an offer 11 million dollars for two years at two years he wants 11.6 it would actually keep him an rfa so not only does it make sense for the, the video but it also makes sense i think in real life and a huge trade just went down st louis gets mark stone for jankowski in a third that seems like great value he must have had a terrible contract and after we made clark that offer the ducks come in 15 million dollars for one year <laughs> Um, if we get that goalie, we can do this, actually, because Latin's about 10, we have 30 million. Um, and the first round picks do nothing for us. Oh my god. This hurts us so bad, though. I'm gonna, I have to match, and then Latin 10, then we get a $5 million goalie, and we're okay, but... Oh my goodness. <laughs> 15 million bucks. This is why he's not wearing the C. Oh my god. Match offer. We have to. 92 defenseman. Uh, rejects the offer. Okay, so we know now we need that guy. Or we need a $5 million goalie because we have left. Yeah, 15 million. We need Latin in at 10. Uh, maybe 11. Like, maybe... I think we can do 11 because he's like, placing a guy who's making a million. So we'll do two years, 11 million, hopefully before an offer sheet comes in. Otherwise, we're just screwed. Goalie-wise, Gibson's gone, so it has to be Alexandrov. We can get him, I think, for about five. So two years. We'll offer him exactly what he wants. It's gonna be cutting it real close. This is hilarious. The doubles are trying to give us Pareko back for first round pick. Like, I think I'm gonna be good on that one. Let's see what happens here. Latin in, Alexandrov. Are you kidding me? We just made him an offer. 13.6 million for six years, four first round picks. Like, I think he honestly has more value than the first, so it might even be worth matching to then trade him. I can't believe these teams with these offers. I'm, uh, six years, it's so much money. I'm matching it. Screw them. Screw them trying to poach our players. Now, now the bad thing is, guys, as you can see, it leaves us with 2.2 million in cap space. I actually see that Sagan's available. 90 overall wants 9 million. So um, after matching, I think I am going to go and trade them maybe just as like a, you know, I can't believe you can do that to us. So like I was saying, guys, I'm pretty upset with Latin in for signing that offer sheet. So trying to trade them right now to the Minnesota Wild, who are actually a good team. They made it to the Western Conference final. This will make them even better. I'm trying to get back Matthew Boldy. Obviously, good player. He had, what, 78 points? Or, sorry, 68 points last year. 
good hands, a two-way forward, good shot. I feel like he'll fit well in the second line. A couple first-round picks just to give us some options. The big thing, of course, we're saving, what is that, 8.2 million, which I think we can actually use to go get Tyler Sagan, as well as still have a bit left, I think, to try and get that goalie. So um, we'll see what the Wilds say here to this trade offer. Trades rejected. The value's a bit low for us. Well, I need those two first-round picks. Um, I mean, I can throw them like a third rounder next year. They think that makes it fair. And they do, so there we go. Um, we lost a really good player in Latin, but if we can bring back Sagan with Boldy, I think that does help, you know, make up for his value. So Sagan's a 90. He wants a 10.5. Um, we can actually even just get Panarin for 8. That might be the thing that makes a bit more sense there. Actually, guys, I'm looking at it. Sagan had 108 points still last year as a 35-year-old. Sagan only had about 78 there, so... I think it makes sense to keep Sagan. He's just sims so well. He is a center, so that guy we picked up at center might move him to the wing or keep him play Sagan on the wing. Um, we'll offer him 9.6 for two years. Hopefully, he stays playing well. We actually have, I think, about, I don't know, $6 million more because we still have that contract offer on the goalie, I believe. Um, so, we'll see what happens with this. Try to make some huge moves here. And there we go. Alexander does accept our offer. So, we have our goalie. Hopefully, he grows. Hopefully, Sagan says yes here. And I was right about how the money works out. Um, AHL players accepted his offer sheet. Again, we're, we're saying no to Niku. We want to make sure we have the money. Come on, Sagan. Um, oh, we don't have the cap space anymore. So I guess I was wrong about how that works. Uh, we have 6 million in cap space. Panarin wants 7.6. We're close. Next year, guys, I'm trying to get trade LA to save about 4 million in cap space. Trading them Murray for Sanderson. Murray, of course, 84 overall. Pretty solid. Sanderson's an 82, but he's younger, 25. Medium top 4. So he could get up to like an 83. Also want a second round pick back. See what they say here. Trades rejected. I figured they might do that, but we could try and get a third rounder instead. They actually had the third round next year on the block. Maybe this will be the difference that makes it go through. And there we go. So trades accepted. We now have about 10 million, so we can go and sign Tyler Sagan, who I think, you know, the way he sends just so well, uh, should be a huge boost to this team. Now the goalie's kind of the big thing, like is that 83 overall medium league gonna grow, gonna play well? Panarin we could also get for you know, almost 2 million cheaper, but we have the money now. Um, so I'm saying, might as well go try and get Tyler Sagan. Uh, two years. Let's see if we can get him for nine. Just because, might as well try and save a bit of money. If not, we'll go get Panarin. Also, guys, our defense is not looking too good. So I'm going to sign Salen here. Uh, 27, 79 overall. 800k for two years. That works perfect. He honestly might make our bottom pair. And there we go. Salen accepts their offer. Again, he probably going to make our bottom D pair. Hopefully, Sagan can join the team. Because, again, that would just be so huge. Um, true, we can't afford if we're going to get Sagan. And he does accept. So there we go. A lot of moves this summer, but I feel like our team's finally pretty well sorted. Also, guys, I just noticed Matthew Boldy actually played really well last year in the playoffs. 22 points in 18 games, so hopefully he can continue that for us. And decent trade just went down. Anaheim gets two second round picks and Nathan Beaulieu for Comtois. So after all those moves, guys, I'll show you what the team's looking like heading into next season. I'm actually kind of surprised Team Stats is still champion, but um, I feel like we have a shot here. So first line, we got Duran playing with Barzell and Mantha. Second line's Caulfield, Sagan, and Boldy getting a plus three. So that second line hopefully is going to go off. Third line there, I think, is really solid, too. We got Comrie, Ponomarev, and Kunin. And the fourth line is also solid. You got Suzuki, Moran, and Kaliev. Actually moved Moran to center. He's got 86 face-offs. Really good. Uh, Suzuki's at 77. Not too bad, but uh, makes more sense to have him on the wing now. Defense, that top pair, Clark and Sexton, is going to carry. Sexton's up to an 89. Uh, Sanderson and Nurse, the new second pair. Then we got Salen and Lorenz on the bottom pair. So defense, lost a bit of depth. Goaltending, Alexandrov action up to an 84, which is nice. Primo's a solid backup. Again, he's got that medium elite. We need him to grow. We need him to play well. I feel like this team, you know, we still have a lot of forward depth. Like, our top nine is pretty insane, even the fourth line. So, we should be good. AHL here is stacked. Top six is all 80. Uh, the third line is getting a plus three, which is really nice. Now, this new coach only rolls three lines, but luckily the fourth line is not the best. I mean, this guy, 74 speed. He's got to work on his skating. The rest of his stats are pretty good. Um, so, you know, not too worried with them not playing much. Defense. The top four is getting plus three, so that's nuts as well. Now, goalies trying something new. Just going with the young, elite potential goalies. Morrison's a 66 at 20 with medium elite. So hopefully, you know, get him growing here if he plays well. Arkhipov backing him up, 20, 59, medium elite. So we'll see how that goes. Usually I like to, like, sign a decent mid to high 70 AHL starter, but... Uh, we're just going to give this a try because the age also doesn't really matter too much. But that's going to be it, guys, for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, again, we've got two seasons left here. Hopefully we can win one more Stanley Cup. If you guys did enjoy it, make sure to leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.